Hey everyone, my name is Sophie and this is Sophisticated Motherhood. Today I thought it would be kind of fun to bring you along as I meal prep for my toddler and get him some lunches ready for his week ahead of school. I am going to be preparing three different lunch boxes with you and please know that what I'm doing right now is not just to make lunches for the week, but it will also serve as some stuff I can put in the freezer and save for future lunches when I don't have as much time certain weekends. So with that, let's get started with the first recipe that I'm making here. So you can tell I've put some butter in my pan that's on the stove. I sauteed up a little bit of spinach. I just chopped it up a bit because some of those strings were a little bit long and for reference our son right now is about 19 months just in case that makes a difference as to how I'm cutting things or the types of foods that I'm cooking to maybe compare for what your child might like I added some cheese to the quesadilla and then pretty simple just making him a basic quesadilla in the skillet there while the quesadilla cooked I wanted to make him a little guacamole at this age he has been very into dip whatever the type of dip might be or sauce things that he can dunk his food into and I try and give him different options unfortunately this avocado was pretty hard it would be ideal to make a little guacamole with a soft avocado and I just played around with the ingredients here but once I realized the avocado was so hard I decided just to put it into a small blender to help soften it up a little bit which actually worked out great I added some lime juice in there probably a little too much lime juice for a toddler's palate and the amount of avocado I had so maybe just half a lime for one avocado you could add some garlic powder salt would definitely bring more flavor to it but if you have a younger baby and you're trying to avoid adding some sodium especially if you have a kid that's maybe under the age of one I would skip adding salt to it you can add some chopped tomatoes or onions if you think your child might like that I had a tiny bit of cilantro in the fridge so I added that blended it up and it was pretty thick so it was getting kind of stuck and realized that it'd be such a great idea to add a little bit of Greek yogurt in there add some extra protein great to sneak that in any way I can and it made a perfectly creamy texture for him to dip his quesadillas in there are two different types of lunch boxes I would really recommend both by the same brand I will link them in the description box below but the thing I love about this one is that it has a spot where you can add in an ice pack right beneath it so you don't have to use a separate lunch box on top of this lunch box, which has been very convenient for daycare because this is just all I need. I don't really pack anything else on the side. So everything you see in here is what he will have for lunch. I just cut those up into little strips and triangles, gave him different options, added in a spoonful of that guacamole dip. I had some leftover black beans in the refrigerator already added some of my homemade taco seasoning to it just to add a little bit of flair so it's not plain black beans and then I am going to take cherry tomatoes and use my little grape cutter which I'll also link in the description box below and any other tools you see that might be helpful and add a veggie there finally I always like to try and add in some fruit so I just tossed in a handful of blueberries this next recipe I was making because I was going to make it for dinner for my husband and I and decided this would be a great meal for even a six month old baby that is just starting some eating if you want to do like the baby led weaning style and I am making homemade falafel and homemade pita. This is a little bit of an all out ordeal so not something I would just normally make specifically for my toddler but it is a great recipe and it makes falafel burgers you can put them on a burger bun for sure but I like the idea of falafel and pita and homemade pita is really not that difficult so I'm getting those chickpeas or garbanzo beans toasted in the oven and getting some of the other ingredients prepped that we're going to pulse in the food processor there are so many nutritious ingredients that are packed all into these falafels and it creates a really nice soft texture again for young babies but also is something that my husband and I really like so all the way up to adults and also going to make a tzatziki cucumber greek yogurt dip with this which i'll show you in just a second the only thing you might want to change if you're making this for maybe a little bit more of a picky eater a picky toddler is reducing the amount of herbs the parsley flavor in this can be a little bit strong as well as the red onion flavor 
the red onions, you can also just make sure that you're pulsing things up just a little bit more so they're not getting big chunks of red onions if they're not into that flavor. But overall, the flavors should be a great way to introduce some spice and some different herbs to a beginning palette. We do follow a lot of the baby led weaning style when our child was first starting to eat. I did a little bit of a combination and I still do now. I cater to him a little bit and give him some foods that are more friendly for him or try and make sure he's getting in all of his fruits and veggies. Maybe if we're not, so like if we have pizza for dinner, I'll still offer him a little bit of fruit with that or some veggie on top of it. But in general, I am really trying and have been trying to allow him at least to have some of what we are eating and have him be a part of the family meal. And especially at this age, I think they're interested in that. They want to know what mom and dad are eating and they want to be a part of it and they don't want to be left out. This dip is very easy. Depending on the age of your child, you can either just dice up the cucumbers with the yogurt dip or you could shred them if you want to make them just cut up a little bit finer. That would be a great idea as well. Just because those hard cucumber chunks can be a little bit difficult for younger eaters. With the chickpeas all done cooking, I am going to add them to the food processor and pulse this all up. But some things last forever. You'll see once it creates a nice paste in there, I'm adding salt and pepper, just seasoning to taste, adjust as you need, and then going to add in my flour so it creates a nice dough type texture that you can make it into your little patties there. Instead of making large burgers for our child, like I made for my husband and I for dinner, I made smaller falafel bites for him. I made sure to make them nice and thin so they could get crispy on the outside and nice and gooey on the inside to have a few different textures for him to play around with, and that's the way I personally like them, and just fried them up in some olive oil. For the pita recipe, if you follow along with the recipe that I link, you'll notice that I'm adding in a lot more ingredients. I am doubling the recipe again because I'm making this for dinner for my husband and I. We also have leftovers for lunch, so I am going to have lots of leftovers for us. Pita freeze is great, so if you want to use this for future meals for your child. And I always like the idea of making things from scratch because you can control the ingredients. It's typically a lot healthier than what you would find in the grocery store. You could always add some peanut butter and jelly on the pita and serve it to your child or make like a simple little pita with some cucumber and hummus for them, anything like that, and make your future lunches or dinners or snacks, whatever it might be, a little bit easier. Once you're done with your dough, you're gonna wanna transfer it to a clean bowl so you can let it rise. And once it is done rising, then you can break it apart into separate balls. I just roll them out a tiny bit and then you are going to place them under a damp kitchen towel and let them rise or rest for another 10 minutes or so when you can preheat your oven. And you're gonna wanna put the dish that you are baking your pitas on in there so it can preheat as well. You want it nice and hot. I typically do this with a cast iron skillet and have had the best results with it. Today, because I was making so many and wanted to move efficiently, I used a heavy bottom baking sheet. You can do that too. You can do that too and all you do is put them in the oven at the bottom rack for two minutes, watch them puff up nice and big, flip them over and cook for about another minute. I also just eyeball it a little bit, make sure they get browned but not too much and you'll be surprised at how easy again it is to make these pitas and they create their own little pockets. I was so proud of myself the first time I did it and now it is a staple recipe of ours. And you'll see with these pitas, I have an assembly line process pretty much down at this point. 
as the pitas that are in the oven are cooking, I am rolling out the next batch of them because this process goes so fast with having them in the oven for such a short amount of time, flipping them, taking them out and all of that. And especially when I do it with a cast iron skillet, I can only do one at a time. So this assembly line process is very quick. You can see how many pitas I made there and how many leftovers we're gonna have. So for Owen, he's probably not even gonna get a whole pita. I just chopped it up into little triangles and put it into one of the containers there. And I'm going to add in his falafel bites as well as his cucumber yogurt dip that I made from scratch. And of course, like I said before, I like to add a fruit as well. So for this day, I'm going to add in raspberries, which also adds a nice contrast of colors. The last and final dish that I'm going to make for a lunch is some homemade pizza roll-ups. You can skip this step of making your own homemade pizza dough and buy some pre-made pizza dough and do the exact same thing I do after I do the step of making homemade pizza dough. But again, as I explained, I like making things from scratch as much as possible, especially when it comes to feeding my kids. And this is something that I make for my husband and I. I make this pizza dough recipe for us quite often and usually double it so we can have leftover pizza and stuff like that. Today I'm just doing one batch of it because I am making this exclusively for our child to have for lunches. They do pizza Fridays at his school and I opted out of the program. I didn't want to pay for it. I pack his lunch every day and figured I'd rather pack his meals for him instead. So a lot of times on Fridays, I don't want him to be jealous of the other kids and throw like a little temper tantrum. So oftentimes I'll try and give him like something similar to pizza or something that's like bread based. So he feels like he's included when some of the other kids do have pizza on Fridays. And again, this is a recipe that is going to freeze really well. I saved a few more of these in the fridge for him to have throughout the rest of the week and weekend. And then I'm going to put the rest of them in the freezer. So to make this a pizza roll up, you are going to bake them in a muffin tin and just roll it out into a nice big rectangle. So I floured my surface and got my rolling pin. You could do this with regular marinara sauce. You could do it with pesto as well. That would be great. Play around with different flavors. You could do half and half. I will say in a moment, you'll see how I packed it up for him. And I did pack it up just straight in the roll shape for him. And he had never had anything that looked like this before. I did once do a tortilla roll up and he really didn't eat it. The daycare is great about sending us home what he doesn't eat. So I can tell what he eats and doesn't eat. And he didn't really touch the pizza as much as I thought he was going to. The next time I tried it, I cut the roll-ups into little slices and he ate every single bite. So it just goes to show that sometimes you have to adjust the way that you present the food to your child or introduce it a couple of times before they really are into it. After the sauce and cheese, I wanted to add a little bit of a boost here. I had my spinach out and didn't want it to go bad. So I added some spinach to the roll-up as well. Whatever toppings you wanna put on there, you could add pepperoni or some other veggies, anything like that, then you are just going to to roll it up as nice and tight as possible from the long end there and get this nice long log and cut it up into 12 different pieces. So you can put all 12 pieces in your muffin tin that you have previously sprayed with some cooking spray. For his pizza lunch day, I added in a lot of veggies here, almost too much that it didn't want to close. I added in the rest of that cucumber that I didn't use in the dip, 
and some bell pepper that I had as well as I'm quartering some grapes with my grape cutter. And then I also had fresh pineapple that I cut up. So I added that in there and then two of the pizza roll ups for him. Thanks so much for joining me today as together we make this motherhood journey sophisticated. If you ever want to see more meal prep videos, toddler lunches, let me know in the comments below. But until next time, I will see you all later.